All right, guys, go to War 32 here, check it out. We're sitting in the Freedom Office back home. Man, I tell you what, it feels good not to be on the road. Uh, however, I will tell you this, I've got something disturbing to tell you, and here it goes. It was uh, sent to me by a good friend, Razor JB, the chaotic canine himself. Uh, this comes live from the Congressional Research Service. Okay, and it's basically what it is, is there's a group of individuals who uh, are there to help inform Congress of certain things. And this one happens to be about handguns, stabilizing braces, and related components. I'm going to put the link to the uh, PDF down below so you guys can read it yourself. I'm just going to cover some highlights of the areas where I wanted to uh, talk about it. But basically what it is, a study group to present information to Congress so that they can regulate your life more efficiently and effectively reducing your Second Amendment. So they're not done with stabilizing braces. Okay, so here it is. William J. Krauss, a specialist in domestic security and crime policy. And here's the highlights. Okay, so I've got this thing. On December 18th, 2020, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, ATF, published guidance in the Federal Register for public comment. Remember this, guys? Remember? Uh, that indicated that it was preparing to reclassify certain heavier, larger handguns, pistols equipped with stabilizing braces. This is how they were going to get around that whole thing, is they were going to go, if it's uh, over a certain amount of weight and it has a brace on it, well, it's no longer a pistol. All right, such reclassification would have retroactively triggered this more extensive paperwork and background check requirements of the 1934 National Firearms Act or the NFA, and required registration of the owner and firearm with the ATF. Hell, they're trying to do that right now with this uh, HR 127. On December 23rd, 2020, however, ATF withdrew its guidance pending further Department of Justice review. Very interesting. So it goes on to describe stabilizing brace, the shooter's assist or shoulder stock. Is it a shooter's assist or shoulder, shoulder stock? Okay, stabilizing braces are devices that can attach to the rearward portion of the handgun or pistol grips, blah, blah, blah. Stabilizing braces and similar devices, however, could serve more generically as a quasi shoulder stock. Ooh, first of all, let me ask you guys a question and you give me an honest answer. This is my Texas shirt, man. I'm going out to dinner with my wife tonight. Uh, how often are AR pistols used in crime? You guys just, you know, out of curiosity, why is this such a big deal with these guys? I don't understand it. Uh, stabilizing braces and similar devices, however, could be served more generically as a quasi shoulder stock. The addition of a shoulder stock to a short stocked firearm could possibly change a firearms classification under the current law to definitional differences between the NFA and the Gun Control Act of 1968. Yeah. So anyway, ATF has long ruled that the attachment of a shoulder stock to a handgun or pistol firearm transformed the Gun Control Act regulated firearm into an NFA regulated firearm. So everybody, what happened was um, SBA, uh, what do we have? Uh, uh, there's a couple other ones out there. Came up with a really cool brace, which basically meant we could take a 10 and a half inch AR-15 or AK-47, put that on there. And man, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm not going to say it's an SBR, but it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. In 2015, in an open letter, I want to smack whoever wrote this open letter, raised questions as to the legality of using or intending to use stabilizing braces as a shoulder stock. Hi, I, I'm, I'm Leroy, and I would like to know, uh, can I shoulder this? Yeah, smack. <laughs> in several private letters made public by uh, the addresses, the ATF, hold on, is this 2-4? Uh, ATF appeared to walk back these considerations in 2018. However, the ATF charged an individual, and we're going to talk about this, with unlawfully possessing an unregistered short-barreled rifle, an AR-type pistol equipped with a cheek rest, which was arguably a variant of a stabilizing brace. Okay, ATF submitted that this cheek rest with fully extended constituted a shoulder stock. You remember a while ago, I did a video on this 13 and a half inch length of pull. Now the length of pull is measured from the face of the trigger to the end of the accessory. You have to call it an accessory. It's not a shot. It's not a stock or anything else. Now, this little guy right here, this is the wildebeest. I put on it the rip brace with the limiter so that from this point right here 
to this point right here. Now it has to be in linear length with the barrel. Now what the ATF did in their, in their little uh, court case is they measure from here up to here, which made the length of pull exceed 13 and a half inch. It was turned over, it was bullshit, and they were trying too hard to convict this guy of something stupid. Don't you do that. Get down with it. Ah, anyway, it goes on and on to talk about the definition of SBRs, uh, SBSs, any of the weapons, and uh, destructive devices. They actually tried to determine that these things were not any of which but were destructive devices. And moving forward, uh, there were a couple things that I captured, a gray area in the law it goes on to explain. And then hopefully that these guys in Congress can read this in a potentially legal gray area, the Gun Control Act regulated handguns and pistol grip firearms are dimensionally equivalent in terms of their barrels overall lengths and or barrels to other NFAs. Yada, yada, yada. Yo guys can go read this, but what happens is, is, is discussed above, it is unlawful to modify an existing rifle. Remember this? We got some arguments about this. Or shotgun by shortening its stock and or barrels into a short barrel rifle or shotgun without following the NFA requirements, which includes a $200 tax stamp. However, a handgun with equivalent dimensions does not trigger the NFA requirements as long as the shoulder stock is never affixed to its frame or receiver. Huh. Larger, heavier handguns, pistol grip firearms in the past 16 years. I'm not going to go through all this thing, but I will tell you this. Uh, I will tell you this. Okay, so in the past eight years, larger, heavier handguns, pistol grip firearms have seen increased sales likely due in no small part to stabilizing braces. This is in the letter. Most major firearm manufacturers are making firearms equipped with stabilizing braces as part of their featured product lines. While there are no available statistics to gauge authoritatively the number of stabilizing braces already made or sold in the United States, the unofficial estimates, check this out, suggest that there are between 10 and 40 million stabilizing braces and similar components already in civilian hands. Civilians. Ooh, you just, you guys, why do they let civilians have anything like this? Only the government should have real big old firearms. Either purchased as our accessories or already attached to firearms made at home or at the factory. Altering the classification of the firearms equipped with stabilizing braces would likely affect millions of owners. That's probably the, and I, I made that little line in bold because I wanted to read that to you. They are actually telling these guys in Congress that, yes, if you were to reclassify these things, then it would affect millions. Today, some firearms enthusiasts view the Gun Control Act regulated handguns and pistol grip firearms equipped with stabilizing braces as a viable alternative to the more strictly NFA regulated short barrel rifles and shotguns. Not going to lie, that's pretty much true. At the same time, however, listen to this, gun control advocates called on ATF to reverse its determinations with regard to the stabilizing braces as well as larger, heavier handguns and other pistol grip firearms. They view such firearms as assault pistols. Oh my goodness, it's just, it's, they're such assaulties. Just get some salt and pour all over them with this firearms with salt on them. It's a salt. Uh, or salt shotguns, and have called on Congress to reconstitute an assault weapons ban. There it is. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks to my friend K9, uh, the, the Razor JB, the man himself, for bringing this to my attention. I greatly appreciate it. He sent me the PDF. I'll put the link down below. But it's pretty disgusting. What to length these gun control advocates are going to. They are trying to ruin our lives, basically, and destroy our Second Amendment. Y'all let me know what your thoughts are down below. I just thought it was really interesting that uh, we're, the fight for stabilizing braces is not over. Y'all be good. Let's go to 132. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom's not free. Check those low uppers out right there. Those are the Econ Build Series. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.